22nd. This one. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're doing plastic dyes? Yeah, that's too easy. That's a song. Oh, right. Crazy Love? We're no, not we're doing, doing Crazy the, Love? No, that we know. This has no song attached to it. That's why it's going to be challenging. Good. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. Mm -hmm. Dear Plastic Eyes, help me be wise. When almost blind, surgery's kind. For now I see so vividly, everything's new, especially you. May I now kiss all hues I missed? Huh? Now I changed that. I changed it to a question. No. There is no question mark there. It could be. So it says everything's new, especially you. May I now kiss all hues I missed. Different. Yeah. She's very sensitive to the slightest in the way. So this is this is wonderful. Um can you tell me a little bit about this? But I'm going to read it one more time, if I may. Okay. Dear plastic eyes, help me be wise. I will, I, this was a cataract. I had two cataract operations. I figured that. Actually, I had I four. Two and then two follow-ups. And I used to wear glasses all the time. It was protecting me from the world. I did. Good to see you. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to get... And it's a very different world. I even forgot what it was like, but it, it was definitely the world is more present, even though my eyes are going up a little weaker now. So this was a, this is thanks to Dr. Singleton, and and oh, what's his last name? Stephen Taylor. Both of them wonderful, wonderful um, um, doctors, and I was able to see very clearly after, more clearly than ever, really. I used to have a story, I'm not sure it's true, that in about the fifth grade, since the world was too painful, you understand, I decided not to see the blackboard, especially since what, stu what school was doing was really bad for the soul. And my parents and the teachers insisted that I read what's on the blackboard, so they took me and they fixed my eyes by putting glasses on. And then I, very proudly, refused to see clearly again, and the glasses got thicker and thicker, and it kept going that way. I had very thick glasses. Dear plastic eyes, help me be wise. When almost blind, surgery's kind. For now I see so vividly, everything's new, especially you. May I now kiss all hues I missed. For the pun on hues, of course, as you know the parts. Okay, now Susan is going to take this poem and help us sing it. What would you do? Could you sing it? You, you, Susan could probably sing it herself without even any rehearsal, but we'll find out. I might be putting her on the spot. Yes, he is putting me on the spot. Uh, but I'll take it on. Eyes, wise, blind, kind, see vividly, knew, you, kiss, missed. That's what I, that's what I see. Now, I mean, that's what I would bring out is in a song, those words. So, um... It seems to me that there's a rhyme for every two lines. And so if there's a rhyme for every two lines, we could try, and I say this because I leave it quite open. The beginning of the song is, uh, the end lines are eyes and wise. So, that's just the title, by the way. Yeah. yeah. Dear Plastic Eyes, Help Me Be Wise. 
So it's kind of a, a kind of a, a supplication. But I want to know, Michael, I want to know how you feel about this. You, it seemed to me, if I understand it correctly, that you have this feeling of gratitude. Yes. Tremendous gratitude for the two doctors. Tremendous gratitude for um, being able to see something maybe that you hadn't seen before. Yeah. Yes. So there's there's a lot of a lot of um, profoundness in this poem for you. If it's very get, simple. If, yes. If I don't get lost in in being proud that I wrote a nice poem, if I can get it underneath that feeling. Yeah. Well. Um, so the gratitude is maybe what I might start with. Yes, it makes me cry. See, I could hide behind these words, but I mean, I really was kind of going blind. I re my grandfather did go blind because I didn't have these things. And I was going blind and they, I, I, I probably hid my gratitude by writing this poem. So you could hear For myself included. And the fear of it, it feels to me like gratitude that the sound might come out of the gratitude. Well, now, thanks to you, Susan, I'm getting in touch with um, feelings that were that are there, but this I wasn't aware of. How much I'm afraid of how much gratitude I have for that. Yeah, I can, I can feel that. I, I can feel his Please. gratitude right now. Well, thank you. Oof. In this room, in the presence of this room. And that's probably where I'd want to start. I'm a different kind of voice teacher in, in the way that I love the process. I just want to say that here. Um, the process and the journey are almost more than the destination of the song because getting in touch with one's own feelings is is where self-expression is. And you can sing all the opera in the world, and you can sing all over the world. But getting in touch with your own personal voice, your own personal sound through your feelings. Um, it's scary and upsetting. <laughs> it can, can be scary no and upsetting. Why. It can be. It's such a simple thing like gratitude. So, a bit so overwhelming. But okay, and so scary of what, what uh, of going blind. Yeah. So I'm going to change the landscape a little bit, and we're going, if it's okay with you, yes. and we're going to play, and um, I'm going to bring in something which is very important in the voice, in the vocal sound. When you have a person, when I perceive a person is frightened or afraid, then I will ask them to kind of repeat after me, if they can, if they want to, something very different. And um, would you be willing to do that? Yes, I'm eager, okay. even though it's pain. Already the pain has already come. Oh, it's, it's come? Oh, I can feel the pain, the, this, the, the fear that this poem was hiding of going blind. It gave a little hint, because you used the word. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When almost blind, but I can use words to hide. It's like the feeling comes out in a light, tiny little, little, okay, we'll let a little of it out and come into a word, so some words, but we won't really feel it. 
So my question to you is, as the process goes, do you really feel like singing this? I know you oh, promised. Now. Do you really feel like singing I, this? I'm, I'm already amazed at how much I was hiding when this is about being vivid. <laughs> it's, um, so I'm very, thank you. Um, um, it's reveal, you're revealing to me what this poem is, is about. I mean, I might write it differently if I was more honest. So always getting, for me, always getting, when someone has a poem like this, always getting in touch with deeper feelings, deeper truths to it. You know, sometimes if you're working together, it doesn't necessarily feel like you need to be singing. You need to be feeling more than singing. And I know there are a lot of voice teachers that would say, ah, oh, come on now, come on, we're here to sing, let's do some exercises and everything. But That sounds more easy, yes, I can do that. <laughs> exercises, <laughs> student, the student now, happy this. But, but, you know, but without being irreverent about this, um, if the person really wanted to sing, and we really wanted to get this started, um, but I don't want to ignore, I don't want to leave any feelings out. This is for, for real, because every single feeling that comes in is integral to your own voice. It's part of you, it's, it's integral to your own voice. So even if you felt like falling apart, you know, even when you're singing, we have a singer in the control room who, um, uh, Christine, who, Christina, Christina who, um, and who, who we sings, shouldn't say anything about her that she sings, sings beautifully. Yes, we should really not. And everything that she brings in is a part of her deeply expressive self. So, um, if you have a person that really wants to sing during a session, what I would ask them to do is play with me. And so I would ask them to speak this, and it may not land, this is an experiment, but I would ask them to speak this in a different way. And that would be like Mickey Mouse. Does that land for you? So what would, it, what would be the example of speaking it like Mickey Mouse? When almost blind. Oh, I see. When almost blind. So I'm not concerned with feelings, I'm just doing the Mickey Mouse. Mm -hmm. This is what I'm comfortable doing, student instructions. When almost blind, surgery's kind. For now I see so vividly. Everything's new, especially you. May I now kiss all hues I miss. That was fun. Much more, less scary than the other. Less scary. Yes. So now, I'd like you to turn it into a mosquito. When almost blind, surgery's kind. Okay, this is cool. Your plastic eyes help me be wise. When almost blind, surgery's kind. Now I see so vividly everything's new, especially you. May I now kiss the views I missed. Now that was really interesting because he turned, he, he said the same import. Did you notice that? He, he, the same import, only he changed the sound of his voice, but he did it the same. Not with Mickey Mouse, he did that very differently, that was more nasal. But this very lighter way started to, and so as I listened to him, I realized that there's all these different, these are all these different gradations of what I call registration, groupings of sounds. So he has this grouping of sound, which is mosquito-y. 
Can you do that again for me? Like a mosquito? Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. plastic eyes. Help me be wise. Is that right? Mm-hmm. When almost blind, surgery's kind. For now I see so vividly everything's new, especially you. Even more now, he was had the ability to emote something else in the poem. Did you notice that? And he became more animated with his hands. And so now what I'd like to do is, did you notice it? I'm, I'm very much in it, so I'm not noticing yeah, too much. Yeah, yeah. I'm moved by it. Okay. So now I'd like you to try something else, which is when almost blind. Can you and, do that? Yes, and, what, and should we tell our audience why we're doing this, or we don't care? We're we're, we're, do, we're we're doing this because he was almost in a state of not singing. He was almost in a state of not, he wanted to sing, and he was almost in a state and, and needed to sing. That's the purpose of this half an hour. And so if that's the purpose, then it's my job to get something else going. And everything that comes out of his voice is part of his voice, it's part of him. And as you can see, the expression started to be a little bit different. And when he went into the lighter voice, I won't do the Mickey Mouse again because it didn't seem to, you know, it didn't seem to land, it didn't seem to work, but I would work with a mosquito. Mm. And so then, all of a sudden, I'd like it to inflect his voice to go like a, like, almost like a roller coaster to be hooked together when almost blind. And so this is part of singing, actually. So could you try that, Michael? Yes. Okay, when, am I going to do this? Dear, this is the title, Dear Plastic Eyes, is that right? Mm -hmm. Help me be wise when almost blind surgery's kind for now I see so vividly is this right? It's pretty good. I, I'd love you to hook it all together when almost kind blind when almost blind surgery's kind for now i see so vividly everything's new especially you for may i now kiss all hues i Miss, is that right? Is that better? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because with singing, singing is elongated speech. Yes. Okay? Unless you do recitative, which is speech singing. And this doesn't lend itself to that. I, I don't think so. Okay. When almost blind, surgery's kind. For now I see so vividly. Everything's new, especially you. May I now kiss all hues I missed. Wow. Something. You make me cry. Something like that. Okay, but no, but your own, and so. In, right. order, in order to get there, 
we do these little steps, these little steps that make you feel good. Don't they make you feel good? Yes, but I feel better listening to you sing. <laughs> no, it's your poem. So I'm gonna now sing what you did. Okay. Is that what I'm doing? Yeah, well, you can sing it recitative style. Is that you what you did? Yeah, reciting style, you know? What did you just do? I did recitative style. It's very beautiful. I did. Yeah. So it, what does that mean? It means that sometimes you sing on the same note, and then you 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 go up. You remember how all all when all we were of doing the, the previous yeah, exercise? All of the endings uh, rhyme. All of the endings go into a rhyme, two at a time. Blind, kind, see, vividly. Could you sing? Could you sing it again? And uh, maybe I'll uh, imitate. I don't know. Let's okay. See when almost blind, surgery's kind, for now I see so vividly, everything's new, especially you. May I now kiss all hues I missed. Oh, I, so I learned now. So you, the first, the so first. So that wasn't word, like the other one. I was very, but I'm touched very much. Anyway, so you just emphasize the, the ending. Yeah. The, the rest is talking. When almost blind, surgery's kind. For now I see so vivid. Everything's new, especially you. May I now kiss both you as I miss. Oh, you taught me. Great. She taught me how to do it. Great. And Christina's power. Oh, wow. Oh, I learned. Oh, I'm, right. I'm touched to tears. Now, we never got, and we might not have time, time flies. You realize we've done an hour, and it's just, we're saying, we're just warming <laughs> up. We'll be back, allow me your next, at least I will, next, we'll see what about Susan. So, but I still never got to the, or maybe I did without knowing. So, when you're speaking now, when you're speaking now. Yes. Um, can you speak that way with this poem? Oh, I see. You see, I'm speaking more animatedly now. Yes. You don't have to add mu music to oh, it quite yet. Oh, I see. Yeah. <laughs> this is too hard. Oh, because it's a poem, so it's hard. Maybe I could slip it in. Now I'm talking like a human being, like I like to talk, with lots of feeling and right, emotions. Right, right, right. And when, oh, I have to change the word. When I was almost blind, oh, it's really hard. Once it's in a in poem form to talk it really for honestly when I was almost blind no I can't do it it's too hard poetry restricts the thing we're trying to not do but the simplicity of it the simplicity of it and the rhythm of it makes it actually uh, connect with the listener that's that's coming from me but poetry is it makes you listen harder it makes you doesn't it make you listen harder poetry? It does me. I thought it would be more attractive. What do I know? Not much. So, I, but I'm discovering that not only was not the true feeling really creating these words, like the gratitude and the fear, the fear of being blind, and the gratitude of see, seeing and seeing without eyeglasses, to feel the world without a protection. See, now I'm talking honestly. And I think the poem, which has that in this, but it was like, I know it well, the real feelings were too hard to handle. And so if I could turn them into a clever poem, a little of them could come out, but not, not all of them. And so it was a substitute for my truth, really, or what's true for me now. Mm -hmm. So we're learning that. I don't know if we put 
what was true for me now in these games. It was easy to do it because I wasn't concerned. Next time we have Susan on, maybe she'll teach me and us how to put our true feelings into a song. We could do that. Yes. What we need to do is sometimes 20 go, seconds to go. go the opposite way in order to get to the other side. So that's when we start to play. And that's what we did today. And, and let stuff come out that we're not planning on, rather than I am now going to be serious with my gratitude and my fear, right. which might be less. And what we found out the